guys, we're going to do a metal polish and refinishing uh, demo video for you guys. Uh, I got a couple of polishes that are up on my work table today, and I am using all of these on a regular basis except two of them. I've never used a Colonite 850 Metal Wax, and I've never used the Meguiar's Metal Finishing Polish up there. A friend of mine lent that to me last night. And I ordered the Colonite 850 on Amazon just to try it out. I mean, it was just one of those things that I haven't used from them. I only use, uh, you know, their insulator wax and I use their, um, you know, their Concord level uh, Caranuba paste wax. So all of these polishes up here, the reason I use them regularly is because I do a lot of architectural polishing on aluminum, on brass, bronze, and stainless steel. I do a lot of work on stainless steel. So I'm just going to give you a rundown from left to right. We have the Mother's Mag Aluminum Polish that comes in a tub. It's more like a thick paste. That is still one of the best ones you're going to get today anywhere, retail, industrial, whatever. That polish, I swear by that stuff, and I use that a lot. The three glip tones, uh, like I said, I mentioned that in a couple of my other videos. Uh, it's a very different type of a polish. It's a very watery, liquid, petroleum-based product, and then it has um, like micro-abrasives in it and some other chemicals that actually break the corrosion and stuff down on the surface. So we have coarse, we have medium, and we have fine. And those I specifically use on stainless steel. And I also use them on aluminum. But when I use those, I tend to do a, like a rotary polishing with a microfiber cutting pad. Uh, when I'm doing any kind of stainless steel refinishing, I'll do the surface correction with a DA, get it up to about a 2000 grit, I would put those compounds on a wool buffing pad or the microfiber cutting pad, hit it at about 3,000 RPM, and it becomes a number eight mirror finish to perfection. It, it's just unbelievable. So the reason I like that, uh, because of the liquid, is that it has a good yield. You don't need a lot to do a lot. A couple of drops on a pad goes a long way because it's such an oily, uh, liquidy consistency. So I, I like that stuff. It works really well, really well. That stuff I found on a whim about four years ago. I did a very, very large job for a world-famous contemporary artist. The galleries contracted me to do over $300,000 in sculpture work. And we had to send the sculptures out to get copper-plated and chrome-plated. And of course, there was a deadline. Of course, things weren't done on time. And we had to expedite things in rush. So when the plating facility sent everything back, they didn't drain the liquid that, you know, as the, the products go into an immersion tank, you have to put them on a rack and let that all drain out. But apparently there were some crevices on the mounting points of these sculptures that the liquid didn't drain out. So in shipping, the liquid got on the finish and, and severely tarnished and stained them. And when these got unloaded at the gallery to be installed, they flipped out. These people went absolutely insane. They were talking about like lawsuits and suing me and it, it was just, it was just totally crazy. So I had all these other polishes and I went down there and nothing was working. So I ended up going to an industrial supply house in Brooklyn, New York. I believe it was in Greenpoint or Red Hook. And I found these there. And I just says, you know what, just give them to me. I don't care what they cost. They were like $20 a, a bottle. So, you know, two, four, 60 bucks right there. And out of everything that I brought down there, those polishes were the only ones that were able to eat into that contamination and get that, you know, those marrings off the surface of the copper plating and the chrome plating. Those things were a lifesaver. I swear by those. I will never, ever not have those in my arsenal because I tell you right now, like I said, the stress that I had when that project, you know, had an issue in shipping, those things saved my life, literally saved my life. Uh, the Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish, that's a really, really good polish. I was a little skeptical about using it because, like I said, I'm not a fan of a lot of the chemical guys' waxes, uh, polishes, and stuff like that. So I said, you know, let me, let me, let me give it a shot. It's 15 bucks, And I got to say, it, it's got a really good consistency. It's not liquidy like the Gliptone, but if you're going to do stuff by hand on billet or stainless, that's a really, really good polish. Not as good of a cutting action as the Mother's, but it's a close second. I'm going to give you that now. Now, the Meguiar stuff in the little tub down there, that seems to be like... You know, they're trying to compete against the mothers, but I'm going to tell you right now, there must be a proprietary formula that mothers has been using because this stuff cuts better than a lot of stuff on the market, even in the industrial uh, end of things. So I tried the, uh, the Meguiar's this morning, and to be honest with you, it, it's not that good. It doesn't cut. It, it's, 
that's good for like basic stuff if you're going to touch up, you know, chrome or something simple, but that doesn't have, uh, you know, the abrasive qualities of really getting hard corrosion and water spots and, you know, chemical, um, you know, imperfections out of surfaces. So that's like 10 bucks. You know, the mother's is 10 bucks, but I'll be honest with you, that's, that's the best 10 bucks you'll ever spend. And uh, the colonite, like I said, I never used that yet. So we're going to show you what we're going to do today. And I have on the table five billet aluminum 6061 spikes. And those are heavily corroded uh, from water and from other contaminants in the air. So I'm going to, you know, use each polish and I'm going to show you in real time how each one breaks that down as far as getting all the corrosion and water spots out by hand. I'm not going to do a machine polishing. I'm not going to go with the Baldor buffer and show you that because like I said, you could use, you know, the grease compounds on those wheels and you could, you know, restore those things in minutes. But this, I'm talking about hand work because a lot of guys are going to be able to do hand work. They're not going to have the industrial buffer. They're not going to have all the stuff that I have on hand. So I want to make this like a realistic video for people that are going to be doing this stuff on their cars, around their homes. Uh, you know, if you have a faucet, something you want to polish, I just want to show you guys you know, the ease of use of all of these products here and how I do it. Over here we have uh, a piece of billet aluminum that I make these jigs when I'm doing stainless steel screw polishing, like you can see here. These are like 630 seconds uh, stainless steel Allen head, button head cap screws. And if you were to put those screws or hold them in your hand on a buffer and it, falls, and it flies out, it can take your eye out or get you, get you really hurt really fast. So you have to kind of make an anchoring system and hold them down. So I'm going to show you here on these when I use my rotary Makita cordless drill with a cutting pad and some of these polishes how I could take this stainless steel raw screw and I could bring it to a mirror polish finish. And this is really good and useful for any of the guys that are building, you know, like an import car, a hot rod, a custom show car. You know, if you don't have the money to buy ARP bolts, you could buy boxes of... Uh, 316 stainless or 318 stainless bolts from like McMaster Car or Granger. Buy a box of 25, spend a little bit of time with these products, polish them all up, put them on your car, go to a show. It, it's going to really add a lot of Im visual impact. And we got a couple of other screws here in different sizes. And then I have a stainless steel, uh, this is a 316 stainless steel clevis pin. So I'm going to try to, you know, bring this up to a little bit of a shine to show you guys. I mean, look, it looks pretty, pretty darn lifeless, as you can see right there. Uh, Right next to that, I have a piece of billet aluminum. And this is just to show you guys, you know, raw billet and how you get to a mirror polish. And the way I usually do that is, you know, I, I um, refine the scratch surface with my dual action sanders. And I go from like, let's say a 320 grit up to like a 1200 grit. And then I go to like a rotary polisher and I kind of bring it back. But this piece was sitting in my toolbox and it's got some corrosion. So uh, we're gonna use this just as a sample with some of the hand polishes here today. And then I got some exhaust pipes here. And this is regular, you know, 304 stainless. You can see how raw and nasty and crude this stuff is. And uh, this is just a sample that I had in my bin. You know, just started to DA it a little bit. This is not even close to being finished, but you could kind of see, you know, some of the work that I do. You spend a lot of time, you know, breaking the surface down with the DA and getting the grit, you know, up to that high level. I either throw the glip tones on, you know, my big powerful rotary buffer or the, um, the mothers, and this thing becomes a number eight mirror polish finish. So I'm going to switch the camera around and I'm going to mount it uh, on me and I'm going to show you step by step and we're going to go through a couple of these processes so you guys can see and uh, you guys can get a little bit of an idea as far as what polishes I would recommend you buy. I mean, like I said, this stuff is cheap. It's not expensive. You know, it's 10 bucks. You spend 60 bucks there. Let, let's say you, you, you spend 75 bucks and you have that stuff. This stuff's going to last you for years because this stuff doesn't really have a shelf life. The only thing I recommend is, you know, for any of the liquids to always agitate them and shake them very, very well before you use them in case anything settles on the bottom. But the mothers, you don't have to worry about. That stuff will last you forever. So let's get started and we'll, we'll uh, show you some of the results. All right, guys, we're back. I just want to show you some of the corrosion on some of the billet aluminum that I have here. You could really see... I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. These things are very, very badly corroded. I mean, at various levels. So I have different ones here, so I could just show you for demonstration purposes. You kind of see what we got going on there. And as far as the stainless steel, you know, I'll do a close-up here. You know, like I was showing you earlier. So it's just lifeless. It's got no shine to it at all. Same thing with, you know, 
these little screws. No shine on those as well. So I usually use the cheap microfiber cloths. I use some uh, disposable acid brushes, especially when I'm working with the mothers or any kind of paste uh, polish. I usually dab that on the surface uh, or I'll put them on the pad. These are a stiff microfiber, uh, like a wax pad, but I don't use these for waxing just because I think they're too stiff and a little, a little uh, aggressive in the microfiber. I specifically just use these for metal polishing. Then I have a 3M uh, natural wool buffing pad here, and then I have a microfiber cutting pad mounted on the mandrel on my Makita cordless drill. So uh, we're going to set up and we're going to get this started. I'm going to show you, uh, you know, the results. All right, guys, we're back. Let the fun begin. I usually recommend always wearing gloves when you're messing with this stuff. It's, it's really caustic and it's hard to get off your hands, but my hands are already trashed from working this morning, so I didn't listen to my own rules. So I just want to recommend them to, uh, to you guys. So we're going to start with one of these aluminum spikes and uh, I'm going to grab my orange towel and we're going to try, I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the Meguiar's right here. And I'll show you exactly what I do with the acid brushes. You know, just load it up a little bit. And then we're going to put some product down here. And like I said, these are very, very badly corroded. So this is a really good test. And I hope you guys could see, um, you know, the effectiveness of some of these products that I have here on the table today. And I'm just going to rub it in a straight up and down mat motion. And I'm, I, I could see it already and I could feel it. It feels like the McGuire stuff has like a Carinuba or more of a wax content than more of a micro abrasive cutting compound. That's just from what I'm feeling with the friction on the surface. And I'm putting a lot of pressure and I'm having a really hard time, you know, getting some of these marks off. I mean, it's taking them off, but man, you really got to put a lot of pressure with this product. So if you guys have billet aluminum wheels, I wouldn't recommend this one. I recommend the mothers or the glip tones all day long, or even the chemical guys. So, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time because I want to keep this video brief and I'm really just doing it for a demonstration. So flip the towel over and I'll show you some of the results. I mean, you could see it took all the corrosion out. Now, works well. It didn't get some of the deeper stuff up here. Didn't, it totally missed that spot. It totally missed that spot. So we'll, we'll hit it again. We'll see if we could get that big spot out. And like I said, this is why you need the cheap microfiber towels because I do a lot of metal refinishing. And uh, see, this one's this mark is really in there. And it works. Like I said, there's no doubt the stuff works, but the one thing that I don't like is the amount of elbow grease and the amount of force and pressure you need to do any kind of like serious oxidation and tarnish removal and, and stuff like that. I mean... You know, it's probably going to need two or three more applications to really get this section, you know, cleared out. But you could see it. So we're going to put this one aside. We're going to use uh, the colonite now. Let's just close this jar up. Put it back on there. And like I said, the liquid, you always want to shake these. And I'm going to use the same rag, uh, you know, for the application process. It's not something that's super critical. I'm just doing a quick demo. And these leather squares, uh, these leather squares, these leather circles are, um, I just die cut these when I'm working on stuff, just so like I'm not banging the metal against the table. So I use these a lot. I have like hundreds of these cut out, all different shapes and sizes for certain jobs. All right, so, I mean, looking at this stuff here, it reminds me of the old school uh, 3M glaze from like 25 years ago. Same color, same color consistency. It even looks like uh, the Griot's Best of Show Wax. So you could see here in the camera, you know, the corrosion. There's a lot of corrosion on this one. So let's see what this stuff does. Well, so far, this stuff is doing nothing. Wow. So I guess they named it metal wax for a reason because that's probably what it is. It's, it's not a metal polish. I mean, the, you know, some tarnishing is coming off on the rag, but now this is... No, this is not, this is not useful for me. No, totally sucks. Now I'm going to waste my time with this. So, uh, guys, this stuff, they make amazing carnauba waxes. 
This may be good, like if you already have the surface polish and you want to maybe protect it as a wax, maybe this is, this is good for that. But if you have corrosion, heavy oxidation, put this aside. Don't, don't waste your time on this. That's not going to do it. All right, next up is uh, the Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish. Like I said, I was uh, pretty impressed with this stuff when I first used it. I polished up stainless steel headers and valve covers, and I was like, you know, aluminum valve covers, and I was really surprised how well it worked. So we're going to go over on this one. And it spreads easily, and it works really well. I mean, look at that. It's, I don't know if you guys could see how accurate this is going to come out in the camera, but I'm under, you know, a lot of fluorescent lights in my home shop. And uh, all I could tell you is that this stuff works really well, really, really well. So this is definitely a good product. I highly recommend this one. You know, I don't recommend the, the Meguiar's and I don't recommend the Colonite. And like the good thing about the, um, the chemical guys, the consistency of it, it's got really good yield. So you don't need a lot and uh, it goes really far. So look, this is the section that we just did and it's flawless. Absolutely flawless. I'm just holding it up just so you could see. You might see some fingerprints, you know, from my hands right now, but that's not what I'm showing you. So you can kind of see this is what it looked like before, and this is it after. So, Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish, awesome stuff. You've got to pick that stuff up. It works really, really well. Let's grab another one. I'm going to go to the Glip Tone. I'm not going to go to the Ultra Fine, I'm going to go to Medium. Just because this stuff has so much corrosion, and you can hear it, it's like water. And uh, find another clean spot on the rag. And then look, we're, you're just going to put a little bit. You see, like I did there? You don't need a lot. This stuff spreads really, really quickly. And here we go. Now, this stuff is so slick that you could go extremely fast. And that's why I like this stuff too, if you're doing any kind of hand polishing. The, it reduces the friction. Whatever chemical compound is in here, that you could go lightning fast. And that's why this is my favorite stuff to use when I'm using rotary. Because it just cuts down on the friction and it just puts an outstanding shine. This stuff also has a, a protectant type of wax in it as well. So it works really, really well. And this is the medium grade. So I'm not going too crazy with it, but I could already see that this stuff is putting some shine on this billet, okay? And it took all of that stuff off. And you could kind of see it all over here. I didn't, you know, go up in the top, but I'm just showing you small areas. This is not as aggressive of a cut as the Mothers or the Heavy Metal Polish from Chemical Guys. So we're going to grab the coarse grade. And I, like I said, I recommend you buy all three of them. And I'll put a link in the video to all of this stuff. And same thing, you're going to just put a little bit of this stuff. And like I said, a little goes a long way. Wear trash clothes when you're doing this stuff because you're going to wreck your clothes. And here's another one. You can see the corrosion. I can actually feel. My God. You, you can hear that? That's all the junk that's on here. So this is the coarse polish. The glip tone. And it works well, but like I said, this is a really bad one that I picked. It works, but you got to use a little bit more elbow grease on this one. I would say that the coarse glip tone and the Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish probably had the same cutting action. This has less friction. This is probably better for a rotary. Uh, but like I said, they're, they're both great. They're both great polishes. So, flip the rag over. Let's just show you what we did. I mean, it's, it's good. It's a good polish. You got to put a little bit more elbow grease because this is not a paste or a thicker type of compound. This is very watery. Uh, but like I said, it works really, really well because the chemicals that are in here, if you leave it on the surface, it actually helps break down a lot of the oxidation and corrosion. So, this stuff is awesome. But I'm going to take the back side of it. You know, you can see it here. And then I'm going to use the last one on the list. Uh, the mothers. 
and use the acid brush. And then we're going to just brush that on there like that. And you could actually smell that the mother's definitely has more of a chemical uh, compound in there. I mean, some of this, this stuff, you know, also has that same smell. Chemical guys, not so much. This stuff smells like nothing. And uh, the McGuire smells like carnauba wax. So let's see what we could do with this mother's here. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is the best. It really is. I mean, these things are so corroded that... They really need to be put on a professional buffer with uh, a loose flap wheel and the right compounds. But I just want to show you guys how bad these are and how good some of these compounds and metal polishes work. Because uh, like I said, there's not a lot of chrome and polish on a lot of cars today unless you have a vintage car. If you have a vintage car with some chrome and some stainless steel and aluminum trim, you know, this video is probably going to be a good video for you guys. But on any modern car, you just really have stainless steel exhaust tips. You know, maybe some guys are doing billet you know, billet lips on three-piece wheels and some stuff like that, but so, you, I mean, you could just see the tarnish that comes off of here. And look at this. Absolutely flawless. Flawless. So the mother's cuts the best, requires the least amount of effort, is probably the most versatile um, as, as far as using by hand, and you could use an acid brush and dab the, um, the microfiber cutting pad and I'm going to show you on the stainless steel. All right, guys, so we're going to put the, uh, the billet aluminum spikes to the side, you know, for that part of the demo. I'll just get them back here. Okay, now, uh, I want to go over something here, like I was talking about, as far as polishing on a, you know, just a, a, a cordless drill. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So we take the compound, you know, just brush it in there. You want to just make sure it's properly dressed. Okay. And you don't need a lot. So uh, we're going to do, on this test, we're going to do the stainless steel uh, bolts here. So here we go. Just hold it in your hand. I mean, it's low speed, so it's not crazy. <laughs> results okay perfectly show quality finish in a matter of seconds I mean look at that that is I'm gonna show you that is mirror polished so if you look at the one prior you know it just has the raw casting bare stainless steel I mean look at the difference side by side so I'm gonna do another one for you. I'm gonna do the smaller one and sometimes I brush the compound on the on the screw head as well and you just watch how I hold it. You can, I, I actually rotate it as the machine is spinning. I rotate with it or sometimes I rotate the opposite direction just to get a little bit more cutting action. It just seems to work for me. That's it. And look at that. That's a show quality number eight mirror finish in seconds. So guys, like if you ever, any of you guys are you know building a hot rod or a show car and you can't afford a ball door buffer, because those are like 700 bucks, they, they're expensive. I mean, that's just what you need if you're doing production. But like I said, pick up uh, like a four inch microfiber cutting pad, use the mothers like I'm showing you here on a drill. And, I mean, you're seeing it here in real time. I mean, look, look at the results. So it goes from, you know, raw castings out of a box to show quality nuts and bolts right here. I'm going to show you this one. Uh, this is the collet, cotter pin pin. It's a clevis pin, actually. And this one I'm going to brush. And I'm using the mothers for all of this because it just seems to work the best, you know, for my needs and for the materials that I'm working with here. Okay, and we 
wait till you see this. <laughs> You're going to think it looks like it's chrome plated. All right? Look at that. You see the difference between the raw stainless and what I just did? Seconds. A matter of seconds. No fancy equipment. It's just technique and good product. Uh, we're going to shoot these little guys here that are on the uh, little jig that I made. Like I said, something like this. Just throw a little compound on there. And then we're going to redress the pad just so it doesn't get too dry. Okay. Cool. Here we go. That's it. And look at the results. Perfect. In seconds. You know, I mean, look at that. That's show quality. Nuts and bolts, I mean, you could use these on a vintage car if you're doing like the doorstep plates or weather stripping or anything like you really want to dress up your car. Like I said, a couple of seconds of time, yeah, you're going to get yourself dirty, but, you know, I think it's worth it. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. You know, a little bit about how I use this stuff. And I'm, for the last demonstration, I'm going to show you some stain, the stainless steel here. All right, this piece right here. Okay, I'm going to move the camera a little down, and uh, let me see what polish I want to use. I'm probably just going to use the, uh, I think on this one, I'm going to use the Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish. And look what I'll do. I'll just spread it on like this, okay? And I switch pads, as you can see. This is a different pad. This is a wool pad. And then I'll take one of these guys, and I'll just rub it in because I don't want to splatter it all over me and the camera right now. And, uh, I mean, you could just see in seconds, you know, some of the junk that's coming off of here. But I'm just going to do a quick pass just to show you the brilliance that's going to come out of this really quick. I think you guys could kind of see the result. I mean, this is not even close to being finished. This is just a quick sample demo right here. This piece actually needs to be DA'd up till about 1500, and then I would buff with the rotary at some of these compounds. But this, this was only um, sanded out to about 600. Uh, that's just because it was a sample. And the customer didn't want a high polish finish. He wanted something in between, so this is what we kind of did for a sample to show him at the time. And you can see. So you could go from raw, crude, exhaust tubing, you know, to something like this, and you could take it up even further. But like I said, stainless steel is a lot harder to polish than aluminum and, and any of the other softer metals. I mean, you're you're gonna you could spend hundreds of hours doing an exhaust system. And I know because I've done it. Alright, so here's another piece of billet. We're going to wrap up the, uh, the demo on this one. Like I said, this one's already polished, but it's got a lot of corrosion in it. So we're going to use the medium grade. Shake it up. And I'm going to do this by hand. Oh, see, that makes a mess. I'm going to do this by hand using just this guy right here. I'm going to flip up and use the other side. I mean, this the, the friction is like non-existent with this stuff. It's so slick. It's almost, it almost feels like I'm rubbing synthetic motor oil on the surface. But man, look at this. And the reason I'm doing it like this by hand, I don't want to use the machine, I want to show you, you could go really fast. Really, really fast. It's flawless. You know, you have a flawless shine. I mean, you could see that. We'll use the ultrafine, the blue, and it's funny because 3M uses the same color of their compound of ultrafine, so that's pretty cool. So we'll dab it in, and okay. 
Okay. Give it a good once over. I mean, the shine. I mean, you guys could probably see this. I mean, look at that. Looks like a mirror, literally. Um, I'll show you. Let me see if you can see the reflection of the bottle. You see? Do you see the reflection? You could read. You could read the lettering of the bottle. Okay. And I'll get the other bottle just so you could see. You could actually read the the lettering. Cool. So guys, I hope you liked this video uh, today with this metal demonstration, and uh, I'll post a link in the description above to all of the polishes that I use, you know, ranging from the mothers to the Glyptone to the chemical guys. Don't recommend, I don't recommend the Colonite, uh, and I don't recommend the Meguiar's or any of the other junk on the market. This stuff I use for all my architectural production work uh, for business. I go through a lot of this stuff. This, these are high consumables for me. Uh, these, the microfiber towels, uh, the buffing, you know, bonnets and everything else. So, uh, hope you guys like the video. Any questions, comments, post them below. If anybody has a, a question regarding a specific type of polishing on any kind of uh, solid surface material, email me direct, autofanatic at yahoo.com. Take care, guys.